sitting here after your first season at, at Durham. Talk us through what it was like moving the area and how you've settled in here in the northeast. Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of a surprise at the start when I got the call from Marcus North, uh, February time. Um, and luckily enough, there were Ben Rains up here, so um, managed to sort of shack up with him for the first couple of weeks, and he he showed me the ropes and um, showed me the way of life up here compared to sort of being down south and. Um, yeah, really helped me settle in um, and the guys here have all been fantastic so um, it was a much easier transition, I haven't, something I haven't done for, for a long time since I went to Leicester, it's the first time I've moved clubs and a new changing room and getting to know new people so um, they all made it, made it very easy and we really enjoyed our time, time living a, a northern lifestyle. Yeah, obviously a young dressing room we came into and yourself and Ben Rain came in at a similar time was coming into a young dressing room, did people look up to you straight away or was it kind of like just, just good to go in and see all these young players coming through in the building. Yeah, I think, I don't know if they look up to me. I, I think we all sort of work off each other. Uh, maybe they do, being, I know I'm 30, but still one of the older ones in the in the group at the moment. So, um, but it is nice to see Durham's always been been known for its local talent and especially sort of coming through the academy bowlers. So you've got Bryden, obviously, and, and Matthew Potts being a, a local boy. And, you know, the Coglins are back together now. So um, it's nice to come into a change room where they have a, uh, a feel of, of home, homebred players, and they sort of teach you what it means to be to be at the club and what they stand for. So um, that's another thing that I've really enjoyed. That you know you hear a lot of local accents and a, and a lot of local values that, that go into the cricket and, and other side of stuff as well, and what we represent. And obviously the 2019 season. Can you talk us through that? Obviously a slow start for the team, but then they seem to just really gel together towards the middle part of the season, and then within a chance for promotion. How was it going through that dressing room? Obviously the tough start and building from there? Yeah, it was tough. I think we obviously we came into the season with high expectations. We've got um, a good team as we showed through the middle of the season towards the end. If we, if we played to that capability at the start, I know hindsight's a wonderful thing, but we'd have been with a really, really good chance of promotion the whole way through. We gave ourselves a sniff at the end, but perhaps it was too much to ask to, to play that well for, for so long. But um, it's good for next year to know if we do consistently put performances together over the whole season like we did in the middle of the season then we have the quality to, to try and get promoted once again. Um, also on the white ball stuff, you know, we had a pretty good white ball season, I wasn't involved but I was in and around the squads and that white ball one day competition, the guys played really well, so Alex Lees, Bancroft, Carsey had a great tournament with the ball um, and that disappointment of not getting through there and, and the quality they showed I think fed into the four day stuff. So. Um, hopefully we can get all that blended together again and make a, a good run on all three three forms next year. And like personally, obviously coming to a new club and you want to hit the ground running. What did you? What were your highlights of the the 2019 season? Um, I think coming to the club and um, making debut was obviously a big moment. I wasn't probably expecting it as soon as soon as it came, um, but just. To, to be welcomed and, and to be given that honour and opportunity to, to play for Durham and um, be on the list of players who represented the, the county and then um, even further on top of that to be given the honour to captain the county and um, be someone who will go down as someone who, who led Durham in, in county championships was, was a really proud moment and a, and a big honour, especially in your first season to, to guys to think that, that you can lead the squad and lead the team was, uh, was really nice and something I won't forget. And so like, how did that come about obviously, what, what was the conversation like being told you're going to be captain of the county? So yeah obviously Cameron went away to, to Australia and he'd done a really great job sort of leading up to, to this moment um, and it was a bit of a hit that he left, um, the team was starting to evolve in, in his in his direction and in the way he goes about his business, his work ethic, his, his toughness, his um, the way he sort of analyses his own game and is, and is tough on himself, the team is starting to, to get into that themselves. So um, he left me a very good sort of a grounding to, to take on. And Northy and Frankie just pulled me in and said, Look, whilst he's away, we'd like you to, to take on um, his role and, and build on what he's been doing and, and try and lead the guys in, in a really exciting period. I got a pretty lucky time to be involved, you know, four games left with promotion on the line, going to Lords all these kind of things it was a great time to, to be in charge but a lot of it is down to, to bangers and um, great, great to have them coming back and, and leading the way again I think. You mentioned, you mentioned Kevin Barkoff coming back and also Paul Coughlin you mentioned earlier, are th those are two big players that will play a big part this season won't they? Absolutely I think obviously Bangers showed his, his class last year, um, 
who was was just getting really into, into the season. You know, him him and Marnus Labuschagne were the two standout batters really in Division Two. So to to lose him halfway through the season was a tough blow. But we know that the quality he has, and we're so happy to have him back. Obviously, all forms. He was fantastic last year, and Cog is coming back. Another cricketer who makes a difference, bat ball and in the field. Um, you can see his excitement of being back. I know a lot of the guys who are close friends with him are excited to have him back, so he's another guy who's added uh, a bit of a morale boost around the group and his quality and, and that sort of lift for the group is fantastic. Obviously you've been back in pre-season training in a couple of weeks, how are you seeing the squad gel together again? Obviously it's a lot of the same players, but going into 2020, what are the ambitions of the, the squad and, and yourself personally? Yeah, I think as a personal, you, you're working through the winter to, to improve. On my personal goals are to, to improve my white ball game, I really want to push for selection. You know, I didn't play any last year and it's something I do want to do. Um, so I want to try and give the coaches a bit of a headache and, and improve my game on that side. Um, but in terms of match stuff, you just want to contribute and match winning performances are what, what you look for. Um, but as a group, I think we were so close in the one day stuff, you know, probably slightly unfair that we didn't make it. Um, the four day stuff obviously very close at the end to promotion. Um, in the 2020s, a couple of games here and there where we didn't quite go over the line and ones we should have done. And then we would have would have been on the on target for a, a run in all formats. So I think it's got to be that that sort of work ethic and that mindset to, to do that again. Definitely. And then obviously the fixtures have just come out. I'm sure there's a couple circled on there for both you and Ben Ray. Obviously, was that the, the one you're looking for? Obviously, you, you had a, a good career there. And you, you spent a lot of time there. So that's just still big big circle on the fixture list. Yeah, it is. Obviously, it's it's nice to, to go back to, to where you played and to, to see old friends and. Um, test yourself against them as well. It's obviously a strange experience um, playing at Leicester last year and then after captaining against them this year. So walking out with Paul Horton um, to do the coin toss was a slightly strange experience. But um, yeah, there's obviously a few. Lords is obviously circled again um, with Pete Hanscom being captain there as well. It'd be good to see him. Um, so you do look at them and, and you think, okay, here's here are the big ones. And obviously with the first one up against Sussex. Uh, down in Brighton is going to be, be a game we look at. We want, you never know, some early fixtures you get, get some England guys maybe playing. So um, there's some exciting stuff to look forward to. And you look, I mentioned you look at the squad as a whole and you look at the season, what are the goals for the team this year? Uh, we haven't sat down and discussed it, but I'm pretty sure that everyone's on the same page that, you know, promotion back to Division One. Um, and, and winning the one-day competitions, it has to be has to be that ruthless and and, and that high standard. And um, I think, like we showed last year, with a with a tinker here and there, and a and a couple of performances from the from the players to get us over the line in certain fixtures, we believe we can uh, really push on and, and make a challenge for all three formats.